In this video we're going to look at how we can use the new Casio ClassWiz calculators um, to find the mean, the standard deviation, uh, if you've got a whole population or use the stand, use find the standard deviation of a whole population if you've got a sample of that population, which is the case in this question. So this question is taken from an S1 paper, June uh, 2011, but this is relevant then to the current AS1 S2 sorry specification. So this question says, the owner of a post office wishes to investigate the masses of letters that are handed, handed at the counter. He records the masses of the sample, sample of letters. Let me just underline or highlight sample here. So this is a sample that we've got. Uh, he, his results are shown in the table below. So you've got the mass in grams, and it's from 10, dash, then 20, dash, 40, dash, 60, dash, and then 80 to 120. And then the corresponding number of letters is 44, uh, 47, 24, 7, and 3. It says find the mean and standard deviation of masses of the letters. So this is a sample. So we are assuming then the meaning of the, find the mean and the sample of the whole population. Okay, so we're going to look at how we do this. Now here is the mark scheme. We're going to see how we do this. So the first thing you're going to get a mark is for finding the mid values. So we have to find the mid values because if you think about it here, the masses of the first 44 people, or 44 letters I should say, are somewhere between 10, uh, it's 10 dash, which means 10 up to the next inter interval. So to get these uh, mid values, what we're really doing, and I wouldn't really do this working out if I'm quite honest, uh, but uh, so I'll do three columns here, and the first column I wouldn't really do, but the, the upper and lower boundaries, I'm really doing this in my head, it's really from 10 to 20, then the next one's from 20 up to the next one, so 40. Then from 40 up to the next one, which is 60. And then from 60 up to the next one, which is 80. And then it goes from 80 to 120. And so your midpoint x, to get the midpoint, you add 10 and 20 and divide by 2, 15. 20 and 40 and divide by 2, that'll give you 30. 40 and 60 and divide by 2, that'll give you 50. 60 and 80 and divide by 2 will give you 70. 80 and 120 and divide by 2 would give you 100. And what were the corresponding frequencies? So frequencies were 44, 47, 47, 24, 7, and 3. So these two columns here, this really is all you need for putting this into your calculator. So we're going to look now at how we put this into your calculator on the new uh, ClassWiz calculators. Okay, so here's the, new, the two new types of calculators that you've got. You've the Casio on the left, you've got Casio FX-85GTCW, and then on the right, you've got the better one, which is the FX-991CW. If you need a new calculator, get this one here. Uh, because this will do everything and it will allow you to do some very, very good things with standard deviation and hypothesis testing and all of that jazz, um, which this other one will not allow you to do. So if you need a new calculator and you haven't got one, uh, uh, you need to update it, you want to get the one on the right-hand side. But both of these can do this uh, function that we're about to do anyway, but definitely the one on the right-hand side is a much superior calculator. Okay, uh, what you do is you hit Home, First of all, I'm just checking this here as I'm doing it. You're hitting home. And then what comes up is one of the options is you hit then statistics. Uh, so hit statistics. And then what comes up is variable one dash variable or two dash variables. So you only want one variable. And then when you hit that up, quite often what comes up is this. Uh, so you've got an X column and you haven't got an F column. I would advise you just to turn on the F column even if it was a question which had no frequencies, have the F column on, because the default is it'll just make all those Fs ones, the frequencies just one. So how you turn it on, you hit the tools button, hit the tools button, and then, oh, hit it twice, don't know why I've hit it twice, hit it the tools button, and then it comes up with this frequency, and you want uh, to turn the frequency on. Also in here, what you can do is you need to edit, and if you go to edit, uh, then you can uh, insert a row and you can delete all the values as well, which is very useful. So if you want to clear your table, basically. But you turn your frequency on and then what you're presented with is, is this. You've now got a, an X column and a corresponding 
frequency column. Now we need to put in our values. So remember what our values were back here in this table, and it was these two columns here. So you want to put in all of those X values, 15, 30, 15, 70, and 100. And how you do that, use your selector arrows, and on the top, uh, top row for X, put 15. Don't go across and do the corresponding frequency of 44. It takes too much time. Do all the X values. So uh, hit 15, then hit equals. It takes you down a row. Then do 30, hit equals. Hit 50, hit equals. Hit 70, hit equals. And then hit 100. Then use your selector to go back up here to the F column and put in 40, hit equals. Then do 47, hit equals. Uh, 24, hit equals. 7 hit equals and 3 hit equals. So you've got all of your columns in. So what your calculator should look like now, bear with me, it should look like this. It's just, it's cut off there. There was one underneath. If you scroll down, you would see the last one. Now, what you do then is you hit the wee button at the bottom right, EXE, -E, execute, I'm guessing that means. It's a new way of them saying equal sign, basically. And then it comes up with a couple of different things. It comes up with variable uh, variable results or cal statistics calculator. You want to hit the first one, variable results, and then this is what you're faced with, presented with, sorry, x bar, sigma x, sigma x squared. This one here is, that is sigma squared x, and I'll explain what these are in a minute. Sigma x, s squared x, and then if you scroll on down, you get sx, you also get n, that's the total number of values, your minimum value, your Q1, which is your lower quartile, your median, and your Q3, which is your upper quartile. So incredibly useful, an awful lot of fantastic information you get there. Okay, let's talk about what these things are then. This one here is Sigma X. Now this, you use this one if you have got a population and you want to find its standard deviation. That's what that is. So that one is if you've got a population and you want to find its standard deviation. This one is if you've got a full population again, but you want to find its variance. And remember what variance is. Variance is standard deviation squared. Now, this one here, oops, sorry, I'll go down here. This one, SX, is if you've got a sample, so you've only got a sample, a small section of your population, and you want to use your, your sample to estimate the whole, the standard deviation of the whole population. And that's where we are in this question. We've got a sample, and we want to use our sample to er estimate the whole, the whole population's uh, standard deviation. Okay, and the last one we have got here is S squared X, and that's again, if you've got a sample of the whole population and you want to use your sample to estimate the whole population's variance, remember, which is just standard deviation squared. So we need to read off uh, all of these things, and I would just read them off in order. So the first thing we get, you need to write down, and you literally just write down from calculator, and then you just write down, I'll do them in order. Uh, X bar is equal to 32.48. Next thing, sigma X is equal to 4060. Next thing is sigma x squared is equal to 176500. I would do the next one a wee bit out of, out of order. I would also mark put in my n. n is equal to 125. And we needed to find the standard, use our sample, as it was in the question, to find an estimate of the population, which is going to be 18.97. So if you do that to uh, 1dp, that will go to 19.0. To 1 dp. So let's go back and see, and hopefully I've got those right, and see what they had in their mark scheme, and in their mark scheme, so you can see the only difference is they've said, yep, uh, it was, so the newer, on the older things, if you're using an old resource from SIA, that really here, this thing is SX, is what you're looking for, it's the SX button on the new calculators, and likewise here, I just call that uh, it comes up on the calculator screen as sigma x and sigma x squared. But remember, there are frequencies, so technically it is sigma fx and sigma fx squared. But that's it. That's how we get all of our, our values. Now, the last part of the question, 
that's the main bit done. There's normally another wee one marker bit. It says it says a number of a number of weeks later, the owner repeated the experiment and found the mean and standard deviation differed slightly from the values in part one. Explain briefly why this should not be unexpected. So this is about the number of letters over a small period of time. Um, and if you think about it, at different times of the year, there's going to be more letters sent. So Christmas time in particular, there's going to be a, a very big difference of letters. There will just be sort of seasonal variation. So what they've just said, their answer is just natural variability of the data. And that's it. But hopefully you understand and you've got that to look over again and again. And if you need to, uh, explaining how we use our calculators to find the mean and the standard deviation.